This video shows me pushing my own personal comfort zone. Please understand your comfort zone may not be the same as mine. I've spent my whole life practicing survival skills so know my own limits and understand the risks involved. Through my experiences and my physical and mental abilities, I find adventures such as this beneficial for my own personal growth. I learn constantly and adapt appropriately to any situation to maintain my own mental and physical health, safety and well-being. I move on through my life as I choose. Please take care with your own lives and understand your own personal comfort zones. Risk is inherent in all adventures. At no point during this did I feel Blue or I were unsafe. We were always warm because of the equipment we were using. Always use equipment appropriate for the conditions. If my tent had catastrophic failure and we were exposed to the elements, then I would have adapted accordingly. Now then, well, do not be uh, led into a false sense of security with these uh, blue skies behind me. I am walking straight into Storm Arwen, it is called. Uh, it has been, hang on a second, let me just uh, open this gate. Come on, Blue. Good boy. So I'm here with the dog and uh, we are expecting 87 mile an hour gusts, that's what it says online. Uh, there's definitely going to be high winds, I know that. Um, luckily it's really dry up until the point I'm going to get ready and pitch my tent. So I'm quite happy about the weekend weather to be honest. Overnight though, it is going to be seriously strong winds. Um, definitely some rain and good possibility that there's going to be a snow, tickle of snow on the tops where I am. I'm currently heading up towards Great End. So I'm now... Uh, on what's this called Grayins Gill so I'm heading up that pathway up to Sprinkling Town from Seathwaite and then from uh, Sprinkling Town I'm going to go the direct route straight up onto the top of a uh, Great End which I've, I've uh, walked down before I've not walked up it but um, anyway it's not too bad a walk it, it's steep but uh, not a problem we'll be fine with that it's just the winds later on Anyway, I need to test my kit, like always, and there's a certain part of me that wants my kit to fail, um, just so I know exactly uh, how far my kit can actually go. Um, and also, um, it's good to let you guys know that as well, but also just to, uh, you know, test, test the man I am. You know, I spend a lot of my time uh, in my comfort zone, doing some pretty radical things, but I like to just sort of push my limits a little bit, so this is hopefully going to just uh, push me a little bit, which I'm excited about. Anyway, it's time for us to get on and walk up here, because we've only got about two hours of light left. Um, I don't really want to be pitching the dark, that's all, so anyway, let's skidaddle up this mountain. <laughs> You know what, I can't be doing that. It's just one of them days. I just need to make sure that I'm safe and sorted. I can't be wasting time. And I have also got a very, very laden backpack, which is 15 kilos plus the water. And I've got two and a bit liters of water. So it's 17, 18 kilos this. So let's just get up, eh? No messing about and get this tent up to take this weather. I don't think I'm right in Ed, you know. It's currently two degrees. It's set to get to minus six tonight with a wind chill of minus 18 and I'm looking at pools that I can actually have a dip in. Oh, look at that. Perfect place for a dip is that one. I would, uh, oh look at this as well, a little flume. So there she is, that is great end. It's quite a, an epic place from this side. It's a big rocky outcrop and you can sort of get around two different ways really or along the top from Scarfell Pike. Exciting though this, very much so. 
So I'm going to wiggle my way up past all this uh, rockery here, and then end up on the sprinkling tarn, and from there straight up onto the top. Already, I've shed a layer. I've got rid of a layer from under this one uh, because it's hot, and I've opened my uh, leg vents and my trousers because obviously, even though it's about two degrees, it's still hot when you're climbing up a, a steep hill with a massive backpack on. So, but number one thing always keep your hands warm you have to do you lose your hands you lose all your kit every single item because you will not be able to use it so anyway he's waiting for me let's carry on sprinkling tarn here and you can see the wind just pushing the water along there but yeah he's definitely uh, starting to turn is this weather he did say it would come in really about sort of seven o'clock tonight where it would be really bad like storm force winds but anyway first of all I've got to get up here all the way up that to the top of Great End if you look here we've got Great Gable and then Green Gable just next to it and they just look fantastic in all this and when I'm up there I'll be able to look back over everything and just uh, just see what's happening watch that weather coming in hopefully but oh yes That. Oh, nice. Part of a sheep is that. Just getting stuck in. A yeah, nice blue. Go on then, fetch it. Fetch it, come on, bring it if you want. Good boy. Well, I'm definitely going to have to be careful. There's been no sign of human activity. I've not seen anybody. I saw a couple of people at the bottom on the way down. There's nobody up here. Normally at Sprinkling Town, there'll be a few people camped out, but not tonight. But if I uh, have any trouble whatsoever on the top, Sprinkling Town's where I'm going to drop down to, it's my safety net. But I've just found this glove, and this is to show how cold it is. Absolutely frozen solid. Anyway, we're up there now. I do hope it snows tonight actually. I love a good snowy camp. Blue just sat over there chilling. Excellent day. Climb through this little gully. Come on then, Blue, get on. Climb. Good lad. I don't do it that easily. <laughs> yeah, he's uh, a lot better on his four feet than I am on my two for definite. <sighs> I never worry about him. Not at all. Look at this though. Fantastic. No! 
Whoa! Yes, that's white stuff does make you excited. That's my kind of white stuff. <laughs> I love that. Whoa. Yeah, the wind's picking up a bit. But this uh, path that I've come up, it's not really a known one. It's, it is sort of down on the maps, but not as like an actual footpath. Uh, just because it's quite a scramble and you can easily go wrong on it. There's quite a lot of uh, different routes without any sort of guidance or markings. No cairns, so you just have to make your own way down. Lake, you've just been eating half a dead sheep, you daft thing. <laughs> you got then? Well, oh dear. Anyway, that was the summit of Great End, 910 meters. And I'm just in the little shelter that's just by it. And it's really nice actually because it's totally out of the wind here. I've just been licked by the dog, which uh, he's just been licking and chewing on a dead sheep, which is nice. Gross. And, to be fair, my uh, hand, I ate a uh, chicken and wild mushroom pie on the way up. Not on the way up here, but on the way up in the car. <laughs> hey, Blue. And uh, that chicken and mushroom pie got all of my hand. I washed my hand, wiped my hand, got rid of it all. Anyway, I just sort of smelt my hand. And it honestly, like, uh, you know when you were a kid and you thought, I'd love some chicken and mushroom soup. And then uh, you open the tin, you smell it and tip it in the pan and it looks like... Um, like some embryotic sack. <laughs> well, that's what my hand smells like. It's absolutely gross, so... And there's nowhere to wash it up here anyway. Anyway, anyway, anyway. Right, I'm gonna have to be uh, careful now. Jacket's on, uh, gotta keep myself warm, and then I'm gonna find myself a decent place to get some pegs in the ground. Although the ground is frozen, so it's gonna be a bit tricky. Anyway, we'll see how we can get on. But I mean, look at this sunset over here. Well, just coming down off the summit, and if you can see in the background there, the Scarfell Pike. It's got a sprinkling of snow all over it. Always looked beautiful from this, this angle. I love it from this side. Anyway, I'm going to have to uh, try and find myself somewhere to pitch a tent and get us pegs in. I mean, all this area, this is quite flat ground. It's just making sure that I'm going to be able to actually get a peg in. Sun's going down just in the background there, and I've got this uh, tent pitched to perfection. Hopefully, wind's just dying down a second now, so I just thought I'd uh, quickly video. But every peg I put a rock on top of just to hold it in place, so it's absolutely rock solid all night. So hopefully, it's going to do the job. You can see it's a bit windy already. I'll say everywhere put rocks on just to make sure that it's holding these pegs down. And look, here's Bluey Dog. In already, just chilling. Not phased at all. So there we go. Time to get inside. What an amazing night though. Fantastic, just beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Well, we're in. Blue's happy. But look, all his underbelly, all this is just frozen. Totally frozen. So we're going to have to make sure that he's uh, tucked up nice and 
cozy tonight and I've got a couple of special things for him which I've used with him before but not on a mountain just in the woods so anyway he's got his own bivvy bag I've pitched the tent perfectly honestly it couldn't be any bit done any better uh, I'm really happy with it I've got no qualms at all with how I've pitched that uh, the pegs are in really solidly I've made sure I took my time making sure everything was absolutely bang on perfect and um, there's rocks on every peg just to make sure um, also what I've done is I've cinched this down so it, as you can tell it's really low is this so like I think the normal standing height on this is about 95 centimeters this must be down to 70 somewhere around there uh, just so it allows the wind to flow over the top of it a lot easier and hopefully not um, make a kite out of it while I'm in it but happy days eh as I say it's uh, done perfectly so this is going to be the ultimate test for this tent I've never had it in winds to uh, this extreme as I say it's given 87 mile an hour gusts up on top here tonight uh, which is <laughs> that's pretty mad is that uh, if it can if it can withstand this then this tent is the bomb absolute the bomb so anyway it might fail we never know yet we'll just have to uh, see and if it does I'll be quite excited about that too because obviously that then makes the scenario where I have to um, sort myself out and make sure that I stay safe and the dog stays safe that we survive the night but uh, hopefully it won't come to that and the tent will do its job uh, I've got everything ready just in case my boots are ready to just slip on I will ditch the lot if I have to uh, just to save obviously uh, me and blue um, so that'll be main thing is you cannot lose your boots your boots are your main thing when you're up here you, to get off a mountain if you need to also a torch if it's night time um, other than that the rest of it I mean obviously I'll have a waterproof jacket on and what have you windproof jacket but um, the rest of it I'd happily just ditch it won't bother me at all so anyway I'll show you blue He's just uh, chilling out there. I've actually got a um, like a, a Gore-Tex bivy bag that I've made to fit him. And I made this about, must be four years ago. And what I do is I use it when I'm in the woods, like for bushcraft and everything. And then it's just like, I've done it so you can actually put a stick in, which forms like an arch, like um, a tent pole. Um, and then he can get inside it. And obviously it just keeps him uh, out of the wind so that's the main thing so i'm going to get him that in get him in that later just to make sure that he's nice and warm i've also got a foil blanket for him as well uh, which will just add to that toastiness but generally as long as he's dry he'll be totally fine in all this he really will he's got such a thick coat and even though it's only early winter his th uh, winter coat is coming on strong it is so ah this is exciting. On top of Great Gable, nope, on the top of Great End, on my own, no one else around, just me and my beautiful dog, Blue. Surviving the night in the storm. Brilliant, eh? It's pretty exciting, is this? Anyway, I'm going to have to cook some dinner now. Um, I have some steak and vegetables. Some extra vegetables. And uh, I've also got some smash. So I'm going to attempt to uh, make some smash as well just to go with it. Um, yeah, it's pretty crazy to be honest. <laughs> uh, it's, I've just sort of laid here in the dark for the last sort of hour or so. Um, and now I'm getting hungry so I thought I'd best uh, sort of make some food. But um, it started to snow as you can hear uh, because it's driving hard it's just smashing against this tent and not only that it's actually blowing up so i'm actually getting i don't know if you can see this in fact i'll put this on one sec but here on the inside of the tent is snow so it's blowing up the outside section um underneath obviously and then uh, onto the in inner bit here so um yeah that's not very good is it and also it's like if you look down here all that that is just snow and blue obviously chilling out but he's just totally happy i've wrapped him in um a foil blanket and he's actually inside the um gore-tex bivy bag that i made him so he's actually quite uh, happy in there look at him look at my little boy 
Hey, he's a good lad, isn't he? But, as I say, look at this snow actually coming in. And that's purely because it's just so wild out there. It's just blowing at all angles at the tent and underneath it and everything. So, uh, anyway, I will uh, do my best to make sure that I'm toasty um, and the dog is happy as well. Yeah, that's the snow. Can you see all that snow just coming in then? I'm gonna have to uh, shut up shop properly, I think. Oh, so this is why I brought this baby bag for the dog to go in, just because he's totally uh, set away from everything as well, so... Anyway, let's try and cook, eh? <laughs> yeah, I'm not doing too well at the minute. This is not doing great. Snow on the inside, look at Blue's cover here. Total snow all over it. <laughs> I'm going to attempt to light this now anyway. Just try and get this going. Whoa, 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 whoa. Jeez. That's not doing very well. I'm currently not trying to burn the tent down. My uh, gas thing's not working right at all. <laughs> oh dear. There we go. Yeah, this is mental. This is snow inside. And if I just show you this as well. This is just outside here where Blue is. Look at that. He's under there somewhere. <laughs> He's totally happy there, but um, yeah, covered in snow. I've just had to shut this because this snow's been blowing in like crazy. So I'm just going to try to sort myself out. I brought my boots in because these are the most important thing I will need if I need to get off this mountain. I cannot lose my boots. So they are inside with me, ready to go on if needed. <laughs> ah! So I'm just going to uh, try to organise myself and... Uh... Hell! Woo! Oh my god. This is the next level, definitely. Brilliant. The weather forecast wasn't wrong. I'm having to push up on this central pole. I'm surprised it's actually not snapped yet. Crazy, look. This is snow on the inside. So this is the second time this has happened. The door's blown up and the zip come undone. I'm gonna have to sort that again. Well I've shut the door again. But uh, that zip's going to keep blowing undone. And uh, I think it might actually compromise the tent by having that open because it just allows too much airflow through it. But, I mean, it's pretty ridiculous as it is, to be honest. Yeah, never again. <laughs> never again, eh? Oh, man. I only have to last till morning and then at 9 o'clock the sun comes out. Looking forward to that, definitely. Well, I just had to fix the door. 
like straight away look at my hat two minutes and then I've got that much snow on me anyway I'm hoping the door will not open anymore ah! <laughs> we go catastrophe luckily um, about half an hour ago before um, this actually happened I got the dog inside so he's uh, he's laid under my legs now so we're both nice and warm the main thing is keeping warm and we're both pretty hot to be honest so that's all right but this tent has collapsed and that is me Oh dear me, tested, tested eh? Oh. Anyway. This is going to be a very, very long night. Quite strangely, now that I know that it's got to uh, a failure point, I actually feel more relaxed. I feel that um, I'm not trying to maintain perfection with it and having the tent working properly. I don't need to worry about it now. It's already damaged and I can just almost just relax and chill out. Chill out. So I can't say I'm going to sleep much though. <laughs> oh dear me. <laughs> oh. What a life, eh? What a life. I tell you what, it makes you appreciate what you have at home, definitely. And it makes you appreciate how humans survived the ice age this is just non-stop relentless and they had this for 10,000 years yep we're very uh, pathetic nowadays aren't we we're doing one night in it something like this and like you know this is as crazy as it gets in life now and all these thousands of generations before us, they put in the hard work, they put in the hardship to get us to where we are now. Total, total respect for all those generations. Thankful to the monkeys, eh? Standing up on two feet and getting us to where we are today. <laughs> Oh, brilliant. Anyway, time to lay this log. <laughs> I'll see thee in the morning, hopefully. <laughs> yeah. Well, I've made it through to about seven o'clock in the morning. It has been relentless. This tent, I'm actually glad the tent failed because it just made it lay over the top of us. So um, the wind at least has a chance of going over us rather than uh, trying to go through us. But it hasn't stopped. It just has not stopped at all. And I literally will not be able to do anything until the wind dies down. If I went out there now, there's 
most of the time I would not be able to even stand up. It would be very dangerous if it did get out of the tent. I think I made exactly the most viable, safe choice to uh, stay in the tent and just keep warm. I'm not bothered about the tent. It's not about that. It's about uh, just making sure that I, I'm safe and the dog's safe. But anyway, I've got to say though, I'm really glad that I've got all the kit I've got. If I didn't have this uh, X-Therm sleeping mat by Thermarest, I'd be freezing cold. If I didn't have this sleeping bag, I'd be um, freezing cold. I'm glad I put the uh, bivy bag over the top of it all just to keep the wind off, because otherwise it would be stripping heat from this sleeping bag. I'm just holding the tent up at the minute, just by my hand here, but at times, um, it feels like somebody laying on top of me because of the pressure of the wind pressing the whole tent down on me. <laughs> At least it stops snowing. The dog's happy though. Um, he's in his little bivy bag and what I've done with him, I've put him underneath my knees. So I'm sort of protecting him and keeping warm so I can feel his heat, which is good. And obviously he's uh, protected from everything as well. But. I'm going to have to lay here and ride it out. I don't think ever again. <laughs> I'm glad I tested the tent though. Test it to breaking point. It's just started to subside a little bit now, so I've just uh, done the hard job of getting some leggings on underneath my trousers, so I've got an extra layer. And what I might do is put my uh, wind, my waterproofs over the top, just so it keeps the wind off. Blue is ready to go out at your bluey dog. Hey, he's a good boy. Yeah, he's desperate to go out now, so I'm just going to let him out for a quick wonder. Go on then, Blue. Go on. in my trousers and uh, all night I've been thinking I need to get my leggings on underneath my trousers and then put these on top and now I've done that I feel so much safer the fact that I can get out and um, hopefully stay put on <laughs> ah! anyway I've got the dog back in he's happy he was just desperate for a wee that's all as I am <laughs> right I'm going to get a few bits together and I'm going to have to try and get out of here
back in just for a minute, just to get ourselves together and have a think about what to do. <laughs> it's absolutely mental out there. I just, uh, obviously was desperate for a wee. So I went for a wee. Obviously, abide by duck piss into the wind. And it did not matter, it went all over me. And as soon as it hit my trousers and hit the uh, jacket, honestly, it was everywhere. It was actually my face in the lot. And as soon as it hit it, it froze. So I've actually got frozen piss all over me. <laughs> complete nightmare, absolute complete nightmare. Right then, I'm all packed up, ready to go. Blue's already outside, he's just totally chilling out there. Laid in the actual snow, he loves it, honestly. I've got my bag done here, um, and I've got Blue's bag outside. The only thing is, when I'm packing this tent away, obviously I've got all this snow that I need to move. Oh look, that's that glove I found yesterday. Yeah, best take that with me as well. Anyway, <laughs> let's get out of here, eh? Pack this tent up. That was an arduous task. Putting that tent away in this weather was about as difficult as you get. Luckily it wasn't raining because that could have made it worse, but my God, it is windy. At times it kept wanting to sort of uh, blow me over and I got tangled up in the um, guy lines a few times, which was a bit dangerous, I guess, because I could have tripped or had it round my neck or anything. Anyway, all gone. I'm just in the uh, summit shelter, actually just out of the wind if I go 10 meters that way it is ridiculous you can't actually stand up so what I'm going to do is I'm going to head back down on the um, back side of this mountain um, which is hopefully going to be a little bit more uh... my god it is windy those clouds are flying past yeah hopefully it's going to be a bit more sort of uh, shaded whatever the word is I don't know you guys can think of that word you know what it is um, <laughs> my brain stopped working that's all Ah, here he is, look. He's a happy dog. Yeah, he absolutely loves these conditions. As long as it's dry, um, he loves it. He's been rolling around in the snow and everything, so... Thank you, Blue. Hey. <laughs> yeah. Ah, right. Get off, then. Come on, get out. I'll tell you what, though. That tent, I know it failed, as in it snapped a pole. But if that were double poled, Actually, it might not have stood a chance anyway. But every peg was still in the ground. 
Um, all the guy lines were totally sound. There's no rips, no tears or anything. There's only one tear where um, the pole went through the actual sleeve. And all I did was is jam the pole, uh, the shorter pole, into the ground. And it actually just allowed a little bit of a um, arch over the top of me, really, which was good. Um, we, but it didn't really matter because the wind just kept blowing it flat down against my face anyway. So, ah, that was the longest night I've ever had, though. I slept, to be fair. In that, with no earplugs, I slept probably... I reckon I've had four hours sleeping all that, which is unbelievable. But, to be fair, I can sleep on a washing line, so there we go. Right then, let's skedaddle. So there we go. Leave no trace. Oh, some epic memories. I don't even want to go, it's just absolutely loving this, just do not want to leave. It's amazing, absolutely amazing. Just coming down to this cross shelter. Oh, park ourselves down, eh? Sit in this snowdrift. Just out of the wind for a minute. What an adventure. What an absolutely epic adventure. I really wanted to sort of uh, test, test myself, I think. And obviously the kit as well. And um, being in situations like that, potentially it's really, really dangerous. So you've got to be so careful. Um, I had all the gear that necessary that would uh, keep me safe and survive, but you know, there are things that could have gone wrong, definitely. Um, the tent pole snapped. Um, I was waiting for it to snap, but I'm glad it did, because as soon as it did, I dropped the uh, lowered tent pole into the ground and jammed it in, and then it just kept like a, a lower sort of a section over my body, um, which it didn't really make much difference, but because, you know, the actual wind was just pressing the, the um, the tent down onto me. Uh, the dog was happy, he was just laid under my legs in his little bivvy bag, and um, I was really warm all night. I, that was my only concern, I did not want to get cold, because getting out in that and trying to get down the mountain would have been just impossible. So yeah, in those situations, really, what you want to do is, is stay with your tent, just because you've got all your gear, you're nice and warm, and to navigate yourself off a mountain in um, storm, blizzard conditions like that was pretty much impossible. So unless you have an absolutely catastrophic failure where your tent rips to the point where you are exposed to the outside, stay with your tent, I would say. Oh, it's been brilliant though, it really has. I didn't want to actually come down off the summit. I was just clocking then, um, there was 80 mile an hour winds, even now, and it's died down. So it just shows you, last night was well over 80 mile an hour with the winds. Uh, I think it even touched 90 just then, so unbelievable. Anyway, I've learned a few things from this. Um, I'm not going to do that again. It's just nice to sort of test uh, myself and the kit. Um, I've also uh, learned that when you go for a wee in high winds, it pretty much goes everywhere. <laughs> so yeah, it just spread literally all over me. It didn't matter which direction I weed in, it went all over my jacket, all over my trousers. 
and because uh, it was so cold up there it froze straight away and just stuck to me so that was really nice so I've got some washing to do when I get back <laughs> oh, but yeah um, the dog was totally uh, sound all night I was quite happy with uh, him he's always really good when it comes to the cold sort of uh, um, cold environments he actually quite thrives in it I'd say and um, his colouring matches perfectly to uh, the surroundings when it's sort of like here look I'll show you you know when you sort of got rocks and snow around it's just like the perfect winter dog I'd say anyway if you like this video this extreme video which I won't be doing I don't think this extreme again maybe I will I might get caught out again who knows but just give it a big fat thumbs up um, and also if you haven't subscribed already subscribe and pretty much just just join me on my adventures and um, hopefully I'll give you a bit of inspiration to get out and uh, a bit of knowledge and know-how of you know what to do in certain situations what I would say is do not try this at all this was just um, a ridiculous one an absolutely ridiculous one but um, I've enjoyed it the dogs enjoyed it and um, hopefully you've enjoyed it sat at home with your nice cups of tea anyway it is my turn to get back make a cup of tea and um, yeah I didn't even have breakfast I'm gonna have to go make myself some food when I get back but anyway take care then guys all the best Thank you.